Well, breaking overnight, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen is traveling to Beijing this Thursday to meet with senior Chinese government officials to discuss managing the U.S.-China relationship while clarifying U.S. sanctions and restrictions. Yellen not expected to meet with Xi Jinping. This, as the CIA director, William Burns, said, saying over the weekend, decoupling from China would be, quote, foolish. Joining me now, Gatestone Institute senior fellow and author of The Coming Collapse of China and the Great U.S.-China Tech War, author Gordon Chang. Uh, Gordon, good morning. Your reaction first to this uh, announced visit uh, by Secretary Yellen. Off she goes. Yeah, we shouldn't be sending senior officials to Beijing. You know, after all the Chinese have done this year, including the spy balloon, they should be trying to mend relations, not the United States. And China, in fact, sees our sending of senior officials like Yellen, like Secretary of State Blinken, as acknowledgement of America's uh, vassal position to the grander court of China. So this is really bad policy. It's not accomplishing what it's setting out to do. Um, but we've got so many disagreements. I, I just don't see where we start. And sending Yellen to Beijing at this time is just not good policy. Yeah, you know, they, they say here in the release, uh, and by the way, the trip is July 6th to the 9th, and she says, uh, we're going to meet with senior officials. The importance for our countries to responsibly manage our relationship, communicate directly about areas of concern, work together to address uh, global challenges. Uh, how about the challenge of AI theft? How about the challenge of the Uyghur Muslims? How about the challenges of Taiwan? Uh, you know, any of these things she could have an opportunity to bring up, but as we saw with Secretary of State Blinken's trip, this could just be a big nothing burger. What was accomplished by Blinken meeting with Xi Jinping? Nothing. What has been accomplished as far as those sanctions? Nothing. And the Chinese now are more worried about us uh, sanctioning them when it comes to chips. Yes. Well, you know, the one thing about chips is that this is something that the Biden administration can do that actually can protect not only the United States, but the free world. And we need to do this because we know that China is using those chips for its military. And so really what we're doing is we're helping the Chinese military to become more effective, more proficient at killing Americans. This is just wrong. You know, when you listen to Secretary Yellen's statement, it sounds good to the ear, but the problem is it is not working in practice. These are the policies that have been in place for three decades since the Cold War, and they've created this disastrous situation. So you'd think that we would stop and reassess what we're doing in our general approach to China and try something new, because something new may not work, but at least it's not guaranteed to fail like these existing policies are. Gordon, Joe opinion here. Uh, always good to see you. Yeah, talk to us a little bit about this idea of trying something new, because if you look at the legacy here of this Biden administration, it seems quite clear to me there is no Biden doctrine, particularly when it comes to China. If anything, it is a doctrine of appeasement. We spoke about the the balloon, uh, which seems to pale in comparison uh, to the hacking, which seems to pale in comparison to now finding out that we have spies over there in Cuba spying on the country uh, less than 3,000 miles from our border, which pales in comparison to the police stations uh, run by the Chinese Communist Party that we have found here uh, in New York and other places around the country. So when you put all that together, the tonnage of the Chinese Communist Party uh, trying to find ways to spy spy on the American people, undermine American life. How do we actually come up with policies down in D.C. that combat that when the administration seems to think it's our job to make amends? Yeah, the American people need to put pressure on their president so that he won't do things that he wants to do with regard to China. So, you know, you mentioned those uh, police stations. There was the one in New York that was closed. We only found out about it because a Spanish-based NGO wrote about it, Safeguard Defenders, and because the New York Post kept the issue in public. But you know, Joe, there are at least six and maybe seven more facilities like that in the United States that remain open. And the question is, why isn't the FBI doing anything about it? Well, the American people need to tell Biden that this is absolutely essential. And if they don't start defending us, that there are going to be new leaders come 2025 after the election. So really what we need to do right now is um, to have a reassessment of China and to tell Biden that his policies just are not working. 
I want to read you what CIA Director Burns actually said. I asked you about this at the beginning, but I want to put a finer point on this. Here's what he said. In today's world, no country wants to find itself at the mercy of a cartel of one for critical minerals and technologies. The answer, not to decouple from an economy like China's. It would be foolish, <laughs> foolish for us to decouple. Your reaction, Gordon? Well, China has actually threatened uh, export embargoes on the United States of pharmaceuticals. This was during the early stages of the coronavirus epidemic when they threatened to throw us into, quote, a mighty sea of coronavirus. So, yes, we do need to decouple. What uh, the CIA director is doing is he's playing a word game using the words that Europe likes, de-risk, diversify. But the point is, we need to tell China that there are consequences for their malicious assault on the United States, and that is decoupling, especially with this new uh, amendments to the espionage law that went into effect Saturday, which basically criminalized normal business operations of foreign companies in China. Right. This espionage law changes really make it impossible for American companies to do business there. I'm glad you brought that up because, uh, speaking of espionage, uh, I want to ask you about the situation with Russia. They reportedly are opening a Moscow research center dedicated to the study of Xi Jinping's ideology. Uh, ideology. Um, this is the first time that we've seen something dedicated to the Chinese leader outside of China. Uh, how concerned should we be about this? Well, it just shows the closeness of Russia and China and that Russia sort of has accepted its junior status by being the first foreign country to establish one of these centers. But, you know, it's, it's serious in the sense that inside China itself, not only in schools but in businesses, you have whole afternoons devoted to the study of Xi Jinping. China is going back to the Cultural Revolution. And we know what that did to China as it drove China, the communist regime almost to the brink of extinction. But really what we've also got to be concerned about is that as China goes back to the 1950s, it is going to do what Mao Zedong wanted, which is to wage wars. Mao didn't have really the power to do that. Xi Jinping does. And what we're looking at is a China threatening most of its neighbors to its south and to its east. And the United States needs to be there to maintain peace and stability, because right now it does look like, as Henry Kissinger said, that war between the United States and China is, quote unquote, probable. For once, Henry Kissinger is right. Gordon Chang, always great to see you. Thank you for being here.